Adding and subtracting fractions is dead easy when the numbers on the bottom are the same. There you go, says it there, must be true. So here, for example, we've got 2 thirds minus 1 third. We've got 3's on the bottom, so that's fine. So we can say 2 minus 1 is 1, and then keep the number on the bottom the same, so it's 1 third. OK, another example. Here we've got 7's on the bottom, and then we can say 2 plus 3 is 5, so it's 5 sevenths. Sometimes you'll have to do a bit of cancelling down at the end. So here we've got 3 quarters minus 1 quarter, so that's 2 quarters. And now top and bottom both divide by 2. So we can cancel those down, and that leaves us with a half. Now it's exactly the same when you've got three fractions added or subtracted. So these are all ninths, so we can say 1 plus 4 is 5, and then take away 2 is 3. So it's 3 ninths. And then we can cancel down, top and bottom both divide by 3. So that leaves us with a third. All well and good. But sometimes the numbers on the bottom of the fractions won't be the same. So here we've got a quarter and a third. What are we going to do with this? Well, are we going to say that it's 1 plus 1 is 2, and oh, what are we going to do on the bottom? Oh, 4 plus 3 is 7. Let's do that. No, no, no. I certainly hope you're not going to do that because that's really disgusting and horrible. That's actually making me feel a bit sick. I'm going to get rid of that. Now, what you need to do is you need to make the numbers on the bottom the same. So you do that by finding the lowest common multiple of the numbers on the bottom. So that's the first number that's in the times tables of both numbers. So in this case, it's 12. So you need to convert a quarter into twelfths. And to do that, you have a look at what's happened on the bottom. So on the bottom, we've times by 3. So that's what we need to do to the top as well. So 1 times 3 is 3. So a quarter is exactly the same as 3 twelfths. And then same with this one, what's happened from, to get from 3 to 12, you times by 4, so do the same to the top, 1 times 4 is 4. Now we've got the same number on the bottom, that's a common denominator, so we can say 3 plus 4 is 7, so it's 7 twelfths. And we can't cancel that down, so that's the final answer. Okay, now what about this one? Well, that's me throwing a spanner into the works, and the spanner is this thing here, it's a mixed number. And as this stands, you can't really do much with it. So when you've got a mixed number, you need to turn it into an improper fraction. That's a top-heavy fraction. OK, so this 3 and a third, what, what is it? How many thirds is it? Well, this 3 is 3 lots of 3 thirds. So that's 3 times 3. And then we've got this extra 1 third here, so that's plus 1. So that's 9 plus 1 is 10, so it's 10 thirds. So this 3 and a third is 10 thirds. So now we can use that instead. So 10 thirds minus 2 fifths. We need to find a number that's the same on the bottom. So that's the first number that's in the times tables of 3 and 5, and that's 15. So we're going to have something that looks like this, and we're going to have to find out these numbers on the top. And exactly as we did before, how do you get from 3 to 15? You times by 5. So we do the same thing to the top, 50. And this one, 5 to 15, you times by 3. 2 times 3 is 6. OK, and now we can just say 50 minus 6 is 44. So 44 fifteenths, that's our answer. But I'm going to be a bit flash and turn it back into a mixed number. And to do that, you divide top by bottom. So 44 divided by 15, well, it's a bit awkward. But 2 fifteens are 30, and that would leave us with a remainder of 14. So it's 2 remainder 14. So you put the 2 down. And then you put the remainder, which is 14, over the bottom of the fraction. So 2 and 14 fifteenths. Now, there is another method which some people find easier for adding and subtracting fractions, which I'm going to go through in a moment. It's called the grid method. But if you're happy with what we've done so far, and you think you're ready to try out the exam question, then I'd go and do just that. OK, so here's the grid method then. Lots of people find this easier. Take a look and see what you think. So you're asked to add together two fractions, and the numbers on the bottom are different, so it's not as straightforward as adding the numbers on the top. So what you do is you draw a grid, two by two, and then you put a time sign in the top left, and then you put the numbers of the fractions here and here. So the first fraction, you've got two and three, you put those across there, and then one and eight, you put here and here. OK, now you fill in the grid by multiplying. So 1 times 3 is 3, 8 times 2 is 16, 
and then 8 times 3 is 24. Right, now you use the numbers from the grid to um, write out the sum again. So instead of saying 2 thirds, you now say 16 24 ths. So it's always the bottom left over the bottom right. So that's 16 over 24, and then you put your plus sign, and then it's this number over this number. So this number is always the one that's on the bottom for both um, fractions. So 16 24 ths plus 3 24 ths is 19 24 ths. And that's how you do it. Okay, another example. 1 half minus 2 7 ths. Okay, if it's plus or minus, it's still pretty much the same method. Draw a grid, put a time sign in, then you put the numbers of the fractions here, here and here. So 1 and 2 there, 2 and 7 there. Fill in the grids by multiplying. And now you write out this again, but using these numbers. So it's 7 over 14. And that's the same as a half, of course. And then minus 4 over 14. And now you can say 7 minus 4 is 3, so it's 3 fourteenths. So it makes life a bit easier, doesn't it? So if the grid method floats your whistle or blows your boat or whatever, then use it and enjoy. <laughs>